All right, everyone, today on the media knows full well the average person only reads the title and maybe the first paragraph of an article. We have the strange tale of Donald Trump criticizing the mayor of San Juan and other officials within Puerto Rico for a largely inept response there to uh, Hurricane Maria, and the media pretending that his comments are meant to defame all Puerto Ricans. See, there's what they're hoping that they're hoping that you'll read the title of these articles, a uh, link in the description, archived, of course, from Slate. Slate, that uh, same group that tried to say that I was a far right commentator, but got it half right and decided uh, to say, oh, yeah, by the way, libertarian, you know, a lot of people think those are the same thing. Um, the glorious people at Slate said, oh, Trump is uh, basically uh, running down Puerto Rico. He's saying the response is dumb. Now, the average person, when they read a news article, as I said, they will read the title. They will read the tagline. They may read the first paragraph. They don't read any further. So a common tactic by the legacy media is to bury the actual substance of the article well below that. Uh, sometimes they have the most important bits at the very end of the article in hopes that the average person simply will not know that those things actually occurred or that they actually are a fact. That is, you can have factual reporting, but if you structure it the proper way, uh, assuming that you're politically biased and you want to have your audience believe something that isn't even technically part of your article, you simply structure it properly and you're golden. You know, 75% of the people that read that article... They won't read it beyond the title and the tagline and the first paragraph, maybe. A good half of people just read the title. And they'll read that and they'll say, oh, well, Trump's uh, you know, running down the Puerto Ricans and saying that they, that, you know, you, you look at the actual substance of the article and you find that when he's referring to them wanting everything, he's referring to the officials within Puerto Rico that are being inept, that are being corrupt, which is also true. Puerto Rico has run a continuous deficit uh, is bankrupt, is corrupt, is overrun with problems because of the officials there and the way they do business. You just look at the the voting on whether they wanted statehood. What did the uh, opposition movements there to the idea do? Don't bother to go vote, just stay home so turnout will be extra low. And so instead of go, so, so that muddies the water because then of course uh, you can't know the actual results, you don't have a large enough sample very dishonest tactic to use when people are trying to solve the colonial question there. Now, a good proportion of the population does, I believe, want statehood, but they're not going to get it so long as the opposition parties try to uh, muddy the waters in that way. They're corrupt individuals. Now, uh, there's corruption in any state. State officials always tend to be corrupt, but there there's a little more autonomy in the corruption because it's not a state. Therein lies the problem. Slate and other groups are hoping that you'll think that Trump is running down the Puerto Rican people because it fits with their ever-present line of Trump is a bigot, he hates anyone who's not like a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, and so he must hate the Puerto Rican people because, look, it took him two whole days to waive the Jones Act. It took him a whole 24 hours before he addressed the fact that Puerto Rico had largely lost power. He must hate these people because they're like, they're Puerto Ricans. So, look, now Trump is running them down saying, oh, these greedy Puerto Ricans want everything. But that's not what he's saying. He's talking about the mayor of San Juan. He's talking about other officials within the territory of Puerto Rico. He's not talking about the Puerto Rican population. But a lot of people, if, they, if they're reading Slate, they probably already presume that Trump is like a Nazi anyway. So they're going to take one look at the title. They're not going to read the article. They're not actually going to look at Trump's actual tweets on the subject. See, that's why, why do you think he uses Twitter? He knows he's going to get shafted by the media. He's inoculating people by taking the, his arguments directly to them so that they can't be scoop, uh, con misconstrued. So that at least people who are paying attention to him on Twitter will know what's actually uh, being said by Trump. Clearly, you go there, he's talking about Puerto Rican officials. He's not talking about the population of Puerto Rico. At the same time, Trump took a swing at these people and said, oh, these people are trying to criticize the relief workers who are doing a great job. There's 10,000 of them already there. Shame on you for running them down for their response, because, of course, they were complaining, too, about Trump's lack of response 
But there is a response. Uh, what more can he do? The president of the United States cannot unilaterally free up every penny of the economy to do with exactly as he chooses to do. The legislature has to be involved for most funding efforts. There's disaster relief funding that's already been allocated. He's already allocated it. What more is he supposed to do? He's also still got to worry about Houston. They've got problems as well. So uh, <clears throat> these uh, people are not being honest. It's fake news. Quite literally. A lot of what the legacy media does is not a direct lie. It's not like they publish an article that's simply full of shit. They try to misconstrue things. They try to, st we to structure things in a weaselly manner so that people who just, they're lower info and they just read the title and maybe the first paragraph won't know what's going on, arrive at, a, at the conclusion that that outlet wants them to while burying the actual factual stuff lower in the article. So it's plausible deniability for them. No sane individual, like as an editor and as an author, that's not the way I would structure something because it doesn't make any sense. It's totally intellectually dishonest. They know what they're doing. But the average person, if you told them, hey, this article was deliberately structured to lie to you without actually lying so that people who bothered to read it all couldn't say anything against it other than it's poorly structured, it's, oh, you're just a conspiracy theorist. We trust the press. Yeah, we trust these people who have been lying to us through their teeth for years or decades, sometimes centuries at a time. Just trust them, you dumb fucks. Or it's a lie by omission. It's more about what they don't say than what they do say. Like uh, Snopes does this. PolitiFact does this. They're, they're both famous for lie by omission. I've uh, spoken of it before. If you're trying to fact check two politicians, let's say they both make a hundred statements you could feasibly fact check. They both lie half the time and tell the truth half the time. Let's say that the fact-checking service likes one of those politicians more. They won't fact-check all 100 statements. They'll cherry-pick. They'll, they'll fact-check half of them, and they'll skew the ones that they fact-check in order to suppress the fact that one of the candidates is just as big a liar as the other. Lie by omission. Not technically lying to people. They're not uh, misrepresenting the facts of anything they're actually analyzing. They're just choosing not to analyze it all. Then their excuse, oh, we can't fact check everything. Yeah, you, exactly. You cherry pick through what you fact check. The legacy media does this all the time too. Oh, Trump's comments on, on such and such were misleading. Well, yeah, because you cherry picked the parts of it that you analyzed and you cherry picked the fact that you analyzed that. And so you can make him look like more of a liar. Meanwhile, some politician who lies just as much, uh, you'll give them more leeway. You'll, you'll ignore a few stories and say, well, it wasn't really meaningful. People don't really care about it as much. You know, when, when Miss Clinton lies or something along those lines. Trump uh, is not criticizing the population of Puerto Rico. But if you just read the title of this article, you probably think that he was. Oh, that evil Trump, he's so despicable criticizing millions of people who are being, you know, they, they've lost power, their lives have been lost, their infrastructure's been washed away. Shame on evil, bigot, uh, white cis Donald Trump. But that's not what he's doing. But you wouldn't know that unless you bothered to read the whole article. The average uh, slate reader is probably left-leaning anyway, so of course they're just going to take it to the bank that it's fully accurate. Of course it's not. It is a lie. Uh, the way the article's been structured is a form of lying. It's speci it's meant to be misleading. It's, uh, they do this all the time. Don't think it's just the left that does this, by the way. Fox does it. Breitbart does it. The Blaze does it constantly. The Blaze constantly presents stuff that should be classed with the weekly world news as though it was legit reporting, then has their little uh, tagline at the bottom, oh, we can't fully vouch for this, or this might not be true. Uh, this is the opinions of the writer. Now, opinion pieces are the same thing. And the same journalist that normally operates in, in an explicit fashion for the firm just writes an opinion piece for the blog and can get away with uh, saying things that aren't, uh, they might skirt the truth a little bit. It's another way that they work around. It's the legacy media. It's the way things are done. You can't do that sort of thing in a video format. Ha ha. But uh, of course, uh, you shouldn't trust those evil YouTubers. It's fake news. They're all Russians or Nazis. Woo as opposed to the people in the legacy media. They never did anything wrong, yeah. Including that dude who uh, was talking about, you know, Katrina. Oh, I saw bodies floating by, which never happened. Uh, he was high and dry in his motel room, probably snorting coke at the time. Oh, yeah, we were under fire when we were in uh, a helicopter over here and wherever the hell it was. I can't even remember the dude's name. Who cares about these pundits? 
Bill O'Reilly. Oh, you're not a patriot because you're criticizing the Iraq war. Ooh, you know, fuck your veteran father is basically what Bill O'Reilly was saying at the time. I can't remember the kid's name. I remember that was big news. That was almost as big as his big blow up there where he's like, uh, do it live. Yeah, that's how the uh, legacy media operates. Very dishonest. Extremely dishonest people, but you have to be cutthroat to get into that punditry position anyway. So it's no, it's no uh, surprise that they're all a bunch of cutthroats and that they lie all the time. That's about all. Peace out.